was a lovely summer evening of Warham at Steam Valley. The engines were settling down after a long, hard day's work. The only engine which didn't seem to be happy about watching the sunset was 101. What's up, 101? asked Bristol. Uh, it's nothing. I'm sure it is something, he said. You wouldn't be a He's done happy if it wasn't nothing, he said. Oh, it's, I've just been thinking. It's been 112 years since I was built. What did you do in your life? asked Thomas. You really want to know? Yes, we do, said Percy. Okay, I'll tell you. It all began in 1901, when my designer, James Holden, under the direction of a great William Dean, chief mechanical engineer of a great western railway, designed and built an experimental oil-burning locomotive. Me. But, interrupted Percy, you run on coal. Let me finish, said 101. My design didn't really work. It wasn't very successful. So the engineers, after trying all their hardest to get me to work, put me in a corner and somewhere in Swindon Works until they could think of a use for me. And there I stayed for four whole years waiting. As I waited, the great classes of the GWR were built. The city class, the first to go 100 miles per hour. The county class, and the great saints. He paused, and there I stayed, until what felt like ever. Eventually, in 1905, George Jackson Church, the chief mechanical engineer, was, ter was touring the cor quiet corners for works. When he found me, he, sp he spoke to me. What are you doing here? he asked. My design didn't work and I've been left here. Oil burning? he asked. Yes, I said. And with that he left, but not for long. He came back with some workers. Convert this engine to run on coal, he ordered. We can't have them doing nothing. Then he left, and the workmen came and got to work, converting me to burn coal, taking good care of me. A few months, I was ready and I steamed out for the first time under my own power and along the main line. For six years I did whatever I was told to do and went wherever I was needed. I was happy and made some good friends. In 1911 Churchill was bringing into service his standard designs and I was not and was going to be scrapped. My driver was not happy when the shed manager told him the news, but he's still a useful engine. An order is an order, said the manager. That weekend my driver and fiber went away. They returned and, said, and told me they had found a closed coy. It had just closed and there was lots of sidings. They arranged secretly to get me there. And they did. A week later I was there. They took care of me and told me that I would be okay. They would, they would come back and make sure that nothing happened to me. And they were good to their word. And as the first generation of steam engines were coming to the end, they rescued them too, smuggling, like they did with me, more and more engines. The engines and me slept until 20 years ago, when a group of men arrived. Shh, said one of them. He's asleep. John, is that what I think it is? An engine? Sure, replied John. No. Pass me that model you've got there. I think it is, you know. It is. It's one and one. The Great Western engine. <laughs> Hornby, you are a genius. As you might expect, those men were the preservationists. They restored me, and, well, I think you know the rest. He looked round at the fence. It was speechless. A story. One and one smiled. 
manage to sleep. 